I was going to read Hellbent, but I realized I remembered nothing about Ninth House. So I just went back and reread Ninth House. It's been like four years now. Nobody remembers it. Do you remember that time when Amazon announced they were developing a Ninth House TV series with Lee writing the pilot? Yeah, what happened to that? Nobody knows. By the way, this is for people who have already read the book. It's not going to be a full summary. Anyway, let's get into it. So you remember that there are magical secret societies at Yale University in New Haven. That's that. So rich kids dabbling in magic at the expense of everyone else. They even kidnap people and perform magic and then put them back. Disgusting. There are eight houses of jerks that do this kind of thing, but because they were just causing a ton of trouble, they created a ninth house called Lethe. This house oversees the rest of the houses to make sure they don't kill anyone or something, okay? Lethe has five major positions. A Virgil, who is like the senior member. A Dante, who is the successor. Oculus, who is like internal house matters. Centurion, who is someone in a power position, I'm guessing. In this case, it's a detective. And then there is the faculty advisor, Dean. And he's called Dean, I think. I don't think he has a special name. The main character is Galaxy Stern. She goes by Alex. She is not the type of person to get into Yale. She was found in a site of multiple homicide and then taken to the hospital. They cleared her because she is a small girl and there was no way she could have killed like three large men with a baseball bat. But the thing about Alex is she can see dead people. No one else can. Everyone else needs to drink a disgusting elixir to see the dead for a short time. Even then they can only see them in gray, but Alex sees them in full color. That is helpful for House Lethe. So she wakes up in the hospital and Dean Sandow is there, who is House Lethe's faculty advisor. And he's like, I can get you into Yale. And she's like, lovely. At House Lethe, she takes the role of Dante. And the Virgil is a guy called Daniel Arlington, or Darlington for short. Darlington is the main love interest in every YA book. So dark, handsome, protective, super smart, super good at everything, dresses incredibly well and rich. The thing is, Darlington disappears at some point. He gets sucked in by a portal while he and Alex are investigating something. And Alex kind of watches it happen because he figures out that Alex actually did kill those guys. You see, Alex can get possessed by dead people and then she becomes super strong. So her then asshole boyfriend, Len, was a drug dealer. And he brings in this psychotic guy and he kills Alex's friend, Heli. Then Heli possesses Alex and then they kill everyone else. So Darlington figures this out and he's like, yeah, I need to tell Dean Sandow. So Alex kind of watches Darlington get sucked into a portal. Alex, on the other hand, is investigating a murder. A girl gets killed near campus. She isn't from school, but Alex suspects the society has something to do with it. She tries to work with their detective contact, Detective Turner. That's the Centurion. He is the generic grumpy detective who's like, stay away from my case. But eventually they become friends with Alex. So Alex basically draws parallels between this girl, Tara, who was just killed, and her dead friend, Heli. That's why it's personal to her, so she can't just let go. The police is ready to blame her boyfriend and close the case, but not Alex. Another parallel is this murder-suicide case a hundred years ago. So they think this guy murdered her fiancé and himself. They call him the bridegroom. The societies are not happy that Alex is looking into the Tara Hutchins case. So they send a monster called Gluma after her, but the bridegroom is there too and he saves her. So now she's like, why did he save me? She asks Pamela Dawes, who is the Oculus at Haas Lethe, for a way to contact the dead. Dawes is sort of this introverted bookish type. Anyway, they figure out a way to contact the bridegroom. And he says, well, I didn't kill my fiance. Help me find who did and I'll help you find who killed Tara. But you need to get me something personal of her. So Alex breaks into Tara's place, but she gets attacked by Tara's boyfriend who was supposed to be in jail and he can't pass through walls? Anyway, the bridegroom is there and he possesses her and they beat the guy and the guy runs away and he returns back to jail himself. What? 
So apparently, he also didn't kill his girlfriend. So another parallel thing. Anyway, Alex is in bad shape. Detective Turner finds her and he's like, what are you doing in my crime scene? Takes her to house. Lethe Dows heals her. She gives Tara's thing to the bridegroom. The bridegroom possesses her again and she sees his memories that he was being controlled by someone and he did kill his fiance. Alex convinces the detective to go see Tara's boyfriend. The boyfriend is like, I didn't kill her. Turner also believes him. So now there's this whole thing to figure out. They perform a ritual to bring Darlington back, but they're like, no, a hell beast consumed his soul and he is gone to the void forever. There is also Alex's eccentric advisor, Bellbaum. She shows unusual interest in Alex. There's also a lot of compulsion magic. You can just assume whenever someone did something, it was compulsion magic. There are compulsion coins, compulsion drugs, that sort of thing. So Alex's roommate gets compelled by a student named Blake to suck his dick or something and he films it. Alex gets angry and uses her own compulsion and makes the guy eat poop. Then the guy comes out of nowhere to the Lethe house, attacks Alex and Dawes and Dean Sandow, and they kill him in the end. But guess what? That's right. He was compelled by someone else. Before they kill him, he confesses he killed Tara too. The bridegroom ghost keeps trying to tell Alex something and in the end he briefly possesses her to give her some dates. She finds out Darlington was also looking into those dates. Turns out those dates are when they bought the properties for the tombs of each house. So they kill someone to create a nexus. Alex goes to face Dean Sandow at his home party. He's like, whatever, yes, I did it. Saint Elmo's wanted their own tomb, so I had the girl killed because he was divorcing his wife and he needed money. So he compelled Blake to kill Tara. Then Bellbomb walks in and she's like, no, I was the big bad all along. Like the last 15% of this book is the bad guys explaining their motives. So Bellbomb kills Sandow anyway. They were not working together. Bellbomb was actually the bridegroom's fiance, Daisy. So she summoned a ghost and it got out of control and possessed the bridegroom. So he killed her. So she is like Alex, it's called a wheel walker. But she possessed the maid's body after she died. Yeah, there's a lot of possessions, okay? Anyway, she had been consuming the souls of other wheel walkers for like 200 years to live long and that is what creates a nexus. She was planning on consuming Alex's soul too. But then Alex calls to the names of the other souls Bellbomb had consumed. Then they come out and devour her and she turns to ash. Alex now can hear the dead too. I don't know how that happened. It is what it is. Then she also figures out that Darlington isn't like consumed. He was turned into a demon because whenever she is conversing with the dead, she hears something, whatever it was, but it was actually gentleman demon, which is Darlington apparently. I know, it is what it is. So now they will save Darlington from hell. The end. Unfortunately, the resolutions in this book are not great. But, you know, I think the emotional journey the characters go through is excellent. That's why you can't really experience the book through a recap. But yeah, now we all remembered what happened in the first book. Let's go read Hellbent. I am excited. Come back later to maybe see my Hellbent review. It might be one of these videos. And the other video should be my ninth house review. So go ahead and check that out and I'll see you next time.